Good evening YouTube. This is the main prepper and tonight we're going to do a review on the MTech Air Force Survival Knife which I picked up for $15.99 brand new off of eBay. It came with this nylon sheath and uh, and so far as sheath goes it's okay. Bottom line up front for $15.99 this is a really good knife. Uh, you can't hardly go wrong with it. Oh, sure, you can probably put it in a vise and break it, and I think if we ran it over with a tank, it may not survive that either. Having said that, let's be realistic about what we're really going to be doing with this knife. If you think you're going to be putting it through the kind of stress and endurance that will require you to put it in a vise and bend it or smash it with a hammer, uh, this may not survive. I don't know, and I'm not willing to do that because I don't think that's a realistic use. I've owned knives for a long time, and I've never done that. But I hear people doing these torture tests on knives, and that's fine. And I'll put this through some normal use tomorrow with my other uh, knife that we reviewed just last week, which is the Smith & Wesson Air Force Survival Knife, or Search and Rescue, as it's called. Very similar in pattern on the handle, but once we get forward of the handle, we radically differ. First of all, the quill yawn shape is very different. This quill yawn was much nicer. I like the cross guard better. Your thumb seems to fit that a lot better. Here, you still have a positive cross guard, but it's not quite as comfortable in the hand. Just to review, for a fighting knife and a combat knife, which is an alternative use that you may have to put your utility and survival knife to, this knife meets the basic criteria. It has a point which is in line with the handle. In fact, the point is perfectly in line with the handle. It has a sharp edge. In this case, it has two sharp edges. And it has a serrated edge. But for combat purposes, a single slashing edge with a point are sufficient. A cross guard so that if you are in a knife fight and somebody slashes at you, you can catch their blade with your cross guard instead of catching it with your fingers as the blade slides down your blade against your hand. Here it will strike the cross guard and that's the purpose of having a cross guard on a fighting knife. I allege that any fighting knife that claims to be one is made by somebody that doesn't understand the history of fighting knives and has probably never been in an actual knife fight. Moving along, you want a handle that has positive traction to it, and this is a rubberized Packmire type handle, and it has these knurled edges in it, which do give it a good grip. But good grip when it's dry is different from good grip when it is covered in blood. And so as a result, we often look back to the U.S. Marine Corps K-Bar, which had a stacked leather handle. Now these stacked leather pieces with the, with the grooves cut in it, are not in and of themselves sufficient to prevent slipping because they're covered in a laminate which keeps it somewhat from getting rotted. However, if this were roughed out and your hand were on it and it did get bloody and slippery, in the design the reason they used the stacked leather was because it could soak some of the blood up and you could get a positive grip. While we have the K-bar out, let's look quickly at a size type comparison. You'll see both the blade and the handle are quite a bit longer. That's a standard Marine Corps K-Bar pattern there. Last but not least uh, is the pommel on this knife. And the pommel on this, and many of the pommels today, on survival knives especially, are flat. And that means uh, that you can use them for pounding. This pommel also has a positive edge to it so that your hand, if you're pulling back, if it were stuck in something, would be able to pull back. The cross guard is also here on the front so that if you push in, your hand won't slide down the blade. An important feature in the field, you don't want to get cut with your own knife. As with almost every knife made today in recent history, it is from a single piece of steel that runs from tip to the end of the tang. And the tang is not welded on, it is in fact molded or forged from a single piece of steel. You can see the tang goes all the way into the pommel, just as it did on the Smith & Wesson knife, and that it is retained with a stainless steel pin that runs from one side of the tang through the other and the pommel as well. So it is bolted on positively. Additionally, the hand grip appears to be uh, glued on with a, a polymer type glue, and it's very solid, as is the 
cross guard is not moving, it is solid on here. When you look at a knife, if you see a weld here, that's an indicator sometimes that the uh, cross guard has been spot welded on, but other times it's an indicator that the tang and the blade are two separate pieces, which is not a really desirable feature. You want a single piece of steel. This is made from a 440C, actually a 440A steel. And if you want to see a quick review on what these steel numbers mean, just go to this link here and it'll break it down. Essentially, the lower the number, the easier it is to sharpen and the easier it loses its blade sharpness. The higher the number, the harder it is or the longer it takes to sharpen, but the longer it retains its edge. The sheath that came with this knife was rather unremarkable and quite simple in construction. One of the things I did note about it that was nice was it had a single rivet as well as some stitching holding the um, attachment on for retaining the knife. And it's basically a very thin type of nylon. However, the uh, sheath itself is made out of a thicker type of nylon, a bit thicker than the uh, nylon that we had in our Smith & Wesson. At least in so far as uh, the weave. The weave is very tight. The weave, as you can see on the Smith & Wesson sheath, was quite loose. Indicating to me it will probably work loose a little easier. However, it is single stitched around the edges. If you wanted it to retain uh, this edging, which I would recommend, you take uh, some needle and nylon thread and run a stitch or three through it. I like this blade uh, a little better than the Smith & Wesson blade myself, personally. I, well, I don't mind the back edge on here. This blade seems to balance easier and it's a lot lighter in my hand. Plus I like uh, the dagger point. It is sharp on both sides. Additionally, we have a serrated type edge, which is interesting and unique in its design because if you can see this as I turn it, it actually acts as a sort of a saw edge if you turn it this way or if you turn it back slightly it then becomes a sort of sheep's foot. I thought that was rather interesting and unique uh, about this blade as opposed to some of the others I've seen out there. Very creative. Uh, the blade comes sharp from the factory and new in the box it was in very good condition when I got it. I am probably going to take this knife and match it up with my Smith & Wesson Search & Rescue sheath, which will need a lot of repair in order to be a good sheath. I may, in fact, just uh, totally deep six this Smith & Wesson sheath and go buy another one, but I'm reluctant to throw things away. I like to try to make something work. Uh, in this combination here and configuration, I now have sharpening stone and uh, magnesium fire starter bar in this side pouch, which is something I'm accustomed to because I had an Air Force survival knife for a while, which was a good knife, by the way. Uh, this knife is stainless steel and won't rust out. Some of the old knives uh, tend to do that. All right, folks, this has been the main prepper, and this is my review on this knife. I like it, and as I listed in writing up front, uh, bottom line up front, as it were. Uh, it's a good knife. For $15.99, you can hardly go wrong. If you break it or lose it, it's only $15.99. I don't think it's going to break uh, unless I do something crazy with it. I don't do crazy things with my knives. They're just a tool, and if necessary, they're also a weapon. Uh, hopefully never need the latter, but mostly will do for the former. We'll take this out to the field tomorrow and we'll use it in when we're doing our review for the BioLite stove, uh, which we're going to field test tomorrow. Thank you so much for tuning in, folks. This has been the main prepper. Thank you, and uh, please come back. Special operators, no. Those that have been behind enemy lines, no. The men who have been through selection, who wear tabs on their shoulders, they can all attest to the importance of having a high calorie energy food that can sustain them through the difficult and torturous endurance necessary to defeat the enemies of freedom throughout the world. We are pleased to announce that for the first time ever, available to the public is the Advanced Special Operations Energy Packet. The ASOEP Dash one comes in a unique paper and dissolvable form, which, if captured by the enemy as eminent, can be eaten. The crystalline contents have been field tested in Halo operations at 30,000 feet 
and have still remained viable and capable of producing energy for the operators when they land behind enemy lines. Folks, if you're serious about your tactical and military capabilities, if you need that kind of energy to sustain you through only the most difficult combat operations, it's a logical choice. But the choice is yours. Do you want to buy the ASOEP and succeed at your mission? Or do you want to be a Blue Falcon quitter, incapable of doing anything but whining? We thought you would choose the ASOEP. In fact, we know that you don't want to be seen without it. And therefore, it's available for a limited time only for $14.52. Credit cards accepted. Thank you.